الحمد لله الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد الشباب نافي سبو زي this is your brother Isa Abu Isa السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله we open this talk with the statement of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم on the authority of Umar ibn al-Khattab رضي الله تعالى عنه where he said submit to رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول I heard the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم saying إنما الأعمال بالنيات وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ يَمْلِيَنْ مَا نَوَى الْحَدِيثِ He said, I heard the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم saying that indeed actions are by intentions and each person get that which he or she attended. And the ulama, they used to use this hadith and place this hadith as like Imam Bukhari in his Sahih, like Imam Nawawi as well in his 40 hadith and many of the other ulama, they used to place this hadith as a reminder to themselves when they're doing an act of ibadah that makes sure that act of ibadah is purely for the sake of Allah. So these videos are for the sake of Allah, Jalla wa'ala, first and foremost. And our intentions with these videos, or our ahdath, our goals, mm -hmm. is to firstly, wake up our people. Secondly, is to purify our ranks. Thirdly, is to advise our brothers and sisters, sincerely with the sake of, for the sake of Allah. And fourthly, it is to make sure, inshallah ta'ala, for those who... Um, have contaminated our ranks for those who have for somehow went in error that they retract from their error that they let the people know that they retract from their error and then we begin to rebuild again so this advice or this talk is no doubt there is only one Salafiyya inshallah ta'ala will be using the speech of Sheikh Fali Fuzan his explanation to a famous bait or famous line of poetry from a book known as al Ha'iya that deals with the creed of Ahl Sunnah with Jama'ah However, there is only one Salafiyya, and this is advice to Somali and the fanatics of us pubs. This is only one Salafiyya. For those who have a problem with that title, uh, the reason why we address the title as such, because no doubt there lies fanaticism anytime when we don't stay to the middle course. And no one can think that they are free from falling into fanaticism. And fanaticism can show its head in, any, in, in many types, ways, yeah. in different ways. Any time we go beyond the bounds of that which is the book in the Sunnah of Fahma Salaf and we start overly praising one another or we start to defame each other based on allegiance to personalities, mm -hmm. based on allegiance to certain people, then that's fanaticism. Yeah. And we have seen countless times throughout the years, especially those here in this community and, and abroad, they have seen the horns of fanaticism from multiple people especially from our brothers uh, there and um, that have this concept of the s -pub concept is what we say. And it's not just the heads of them, but it's, it's a fanaticism. When we see individuals assaulting you, mm. oppressing you, calling you all types of names because you want to stick to that which is the Quran and the Sunnah, you, or threaten you physical or physically, threats. so forth. So we want to advise them with the advice of the Salaf, um, and that of Sheikh Salih Fuzan Afidullah Ta'ala. The line of poetry goes to Masak bi hablillahi wa tabi' al huda wa la taku bi da'iyan la allaka tuflihu. This first line of poetry is what we're going to be covering. Hold firmly to the Book of Allah and follow the guidance and do not be of those, do not be an innovator. Do not be of those who innovate or introduce something new into the deen of Allah mm. and his Master Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that has not sanctioned uh, and perhaps you will be successful. So this is the first line. Sheikh Fuzan, I feel Allah, Brother Isa is going to begin. He says, Tamasak. He says, Bada al Nadim, Rahimahullah. He said, The one who wrote the poetry, the one who ordered this uh, line of poetry, Rahimahullah, may Allah have mercy on him. He began with the statement, Tamasak bihablillah, holding fast to the rope of Allah. A Tamasak, a you had Muslim, bihablillah, a lady who a Quran was sun, akhdan min kolihi ta'ala. And he says that meaning to hold on, O Muslim, to the rope of Allah, which is the Quran and the Sunnah, which has been taken from the ayat in Surah Ali Imran, verse 103, when Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Hold on firmly to the rope of Allah together and do not be divided. And do not be divided. And before moving on, before moving on if. Because look at the ayat, hold on to the rope of Allah and do not be divided. If the kitab was sunnah was being established, as people claim, 
then we would, our hearts wouldn't be divided and we wouldn't be five different Salafi organizations in the same city. The fact that um, uh, us pubs and people like our brothers, may Allah preserve them, when they came to our town, the only thing that came from it, we all got divided and separated from one another. If it was a, a punky tap or sunnah, how did we get divided? Because Allah didn't lie. His messenger didn't lie. Kitab and Sunnah was brings us together. If we're not together, that means we're not returning back to Kitab, Kitab or Sunnah as a community, and that's why we're divided. Uh, the point I want to bring here is, first and foremost, this point is something that Sheikh Muhammad Wahab, rahmatullah ta'ala alayhi, he brings in his book, which is famous known as Usul al-Sitta. No. As the second principle, he brings the it's the obligation of sticking together collectively mm. as a one body mm -hmm. and he mentioned a verse where Allah Jalla wa Ala mentioned that he have sanctioned and have legislated a deen for Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the previous prophets Ali, sir, and he said an akimu deen that they established the deen wala tatafarruku and they do not become divided mm. and the Sheikh is going to elaborate better than I can however the point is holding on to the book what does that mean the Shaykh, he mentioned here that the rope of Allah, first and foremost, is considered to be the Qur'an and the Sunnah. So it's important from the onslaught or from the foundation that you hold on to the Qur'an and the Sunnah and the proper method. What is the proper method of holding on to the Qur'an and Sunnah? Mm -hmm. You have to hold on to the Qur'an and Sunnah in the way that the first earlier generations understood to hold on to the Qur'an and Sunnah. Mm -hmm. You cannot let personal squabbles. You cannot let jealousy. You cannot let wealth and power. Wealth, power. You cannot let any of these things contaminate your holding and adhering to the Quran and the Sunnah. No. You cannot let any of that come in and contaminate. And the example of it is the fact that whenever you got two groups of people, one saying, as he's going to bring in his explanation, one saying, we hold on to the Kitab and the Sunnah. We follow the Salaf, right? And we do such and such. And they bring statements and athars. And then you have another group doing the same thing. But they are at odds. Something is wrong. Somebody is not being truthful. One party is not holding on the same thing. Why? Because Allah Jalla wa Ala, He told us about the Jews and the Christians. He said that the Jews, they say that what? We'll call it till Yahud, laysa till Nasala ala shaykh. The Jews, they say to the Christians, you have nothing to stand upon. We'll call it till Nasara, lil Yahud. And the Christians, they respond to the Jews and they say, you have nothing to stand upon either. But Allah said, well, whom yet to whom no kitab. But they both profess to recite the same book. They both profess to recite somebody here is lying. is lying. Somebody is misinterpreting. Somebody is lying. And this would, is sad that our ummah, our community here in Philadelphia and in the Philadelphia area and outside the Philadelphia area, we have to stop lying to ourselves. We have to stop lying to ourselves. We call upon the commoners. We even call upon the elders, as well as the students of knowledge. Students of knowledge, we call upon you if you see something that is not uh, correct within, whether within this dawah, this blessed dawah, from amongst the callers, from amongst those who profess the whole salafiyah, then it's incumbent upon you to say something. We're past the stage of you being silent, saying, I'm going to let things go by. I'm just going to let things pass by. You know, I'm just going to busy the people with ilm. I'm going to busy the people with knowledge, and you're not going to address this issue. Why? Because this issue here is a part of what? Purifying the ranks and making sure that we do not go to the left no. or go to the right as a part of the deen anyway. No. You have to advise your brothers. No. And this is what we've seen the Salaf did. Continue with Sheikh Fuzan, Hafibullah, Min Qawlihi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ يَعِيشْ مِنْكُمْ فَصَرَى اختلاف كثيرة فعليكم بالسنة وصون خلفاء الرشيدين مهديين من بعد تمسكوا بها وعدوا عليها بالنواجذ إياكم محتذات الأمور فإن كل محتثة بدع وكل بدعة ضلالة. and he brings the, this this hadith you can you can bring so many benefits from this hadith but inshallah taala he says whoever lives a time after me right from amongst you from amongst you Muslims he said, you will see many differing. You will see much differing. And what did he say when we see differing? Did he say, get into a, a clique? Did he say, get to a particular masjid? Did he say, get, uh, call people deviants? Did he say, uh, disrespect one another? Did he say, uh, 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 have wala wa bara on personalities? Not. Look what the Prophet ﷺ said told us to do when we see these ikhtilaf. Because he said it's going to be ikhtilaf. It's going to differ. It's going to happen. What did he say? He said, 
فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِالسُنَّةِ Upon you is the hold on to my sunnah in the sunnah of Khulifa Rashidin Mahdiim and Ba'di. And hold on to the Khulifa Rashidin, which we know is Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali. Right? Hold on to their sunnah. And that has a whole meaning to it, but we don't have the time to go into that. Min Ba'di, who comes after me, Tamasiku biha. Hold on to it. Mu'addu alayha bin nawajid. And bite on to those sunnah with your molars. Because, you know, you put something in your molar teeth and try to pull it out, it can't, it don't. It can't, you can't pull it out. Look at, look at the Prophet, look at the, the wording that he's using about holding on to the sunnah. He said, I warn you from novelties or newly invented matters in the religion. For inna kulli muhdathatin bid'a. He said, verily, every single newly invented matter is an innovation. And every innovation is misguidance. And every innovation is misguidance. So we're going to show you here with this hadith that clearly, um, ikhtilaf is supposed to go back to Quran and sunnah. Not go back to personalities, not go back to a masjid, not go back to some, uh, a mekteba. It's supposed to go back to kitab, wasuna, with the understanding of who? Of the sahaba. That's how we get our ikhtilaf, not by name calling and slandering one another. Then he goes and he says, He said, This line of poetry has been taken from Quran and Sunnah, which, which, commands, which it commands with. Holding on to the rope of Allah, wa habl Allah, who will Qurani was Sunnah to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And the rope of Allah here is the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wa ibaratin ukhra nuku habl Allah, who will wahyu aladi anzalhu ala Rasulihi. So I can the Quran and all Sunnah. Or you can use another way to say it, which is the, the rope of Allah means revelation, which came down from Allah upon His Messenger, which is the which is the Quran and the Sunnah. Um, just to go back to the hadith itself, there is a condition that you must understand that the Prophet ﷺ laid down. One, this is the hadith of Al Arabad ibn Sariyah. Even now, we place it in the 27th hadith uh, that he mentioned. Actually, is the actual 28th hadith of one that he mentioned inside his 40 hadith, which is famously known. This hadith is tremendous because in this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned uh, that there will be differing. Mm -hmm. He had established the fact that to his companions when he told them this hadith that they're going to be differing But then he gave them a remedy and then he gave them a way out of this dif differing mm -hmm. He gave them a way and that way was he told them to hold firm to my sunnah and the sunnah of my rightly God Khulafa, my successors and then not only did he tell them about holding on to this he actually He actually after saying this he actually now gave them an incentive as well as told them how to hold on to it. He said, hold on to it firmly. Mm -hmm. Don't let it go at all. And then he said, bite down on it. To show you the severity because this mm -hmm. differing, as many early have explained from this narration, this differing would be as such that people could go astray. No. That people, Iman, could be shaken. That people understand it can be shaken. So the Prophet ﷺ is telling you, look, to biha. Hold on to it and bite down on it. Mm -hmm. Hold on to it and bite down to it. Stick to it no matter what. Not stick to personalities. Not stick to scholars. Not stick to students. Not stick to the masjids. And let's go back again. When we say not stick to scholars, we're saying what Sheikh Muslim Taymiyyah said. We must stick to the scholars in terms of learning our deen. But when we say not stick to scholars, meaning pitting one scholar over another scholar in terms of their opinions, placing, placing our allegiance to one scholar over another scholar, saying that, you know, we acknowledge all of the scholars that are here to the Quran and the Sunnah, yeah. Allah Fahim Salaf, no matter what place and part they may be in. There is the Kibar, and then there's other scholars who might not be of Kibar level. Yeah. We acknowledge them all. And alhamdulillah, we accept that which they come with as long as it's what? According to Quran, Sunnah, Fahim Salaf. Because their speech isn't a proof in Islam. Exactly. Next, the Prophet ﷺ also said something in this hadith that's very important. The Prophet ﷺ had given us some prophecy. Not only that they would be different, but he said that beware of newly invented matters. After telling you to hold firm to his sunnah, he was going to let you know that anything outside of his sunnah, mm -hmm. anything that outside of the Quran is going to be what? Newly invented mm -hmm. matters. Anything outside of the sunnah Anything outside of the Quran, what he has been struck us with, no. right? Because yeah. he said what? In another narration, I left you with something that's clear as night and day. No. Right? If you hold firm to it, you will never go astray. 
That's the kitab, the book of Allah, my sunnah and my sunnah. sunnah. No. Right? So anything outside of that will be a newly invented matter. No. And he said every newly invented matter is going to what? Be a misguidance. And another narration said every misguidance is going to be where? In the fire. In the fire. Nah. So the Shaykh, he said, to masak bihablillah. All of us have been commanded to hold on to the rope of Allah. What do that mean? I'tisamu bihi. Fasting to it. Kama qala Allah ta'ala. As Allah Jalla says in the Quran, wa atasimu bihablillahi jami'an. Hold firmly to the rope of Allah. He said, when Nabi Yusuf Sallam yakul, and another narration the Prophet Sallam, he said, in the Allah yaludu ali kuli thalatha. Indeed, Allah is pleased for you three things. And ta'abuduhu wa la tushriku bihi shay'a. And our brother is going to break down a benefit about this hadith soon, <laughs> inshallah. Um, that you worship Allah alone and that you do not associate partners with Him in anything. And that you hold on firmly to the book of Allah and you do not become divided. And that you advise those whom Allah has placed above you. Stop here. This hadith is specifically mm -hmm. talking about the rulers. Mm -hmm. However, it can be broadened. It can be brought in to those because you have rulers of two types. Mm -hmm. You got rulers who are the rulers of the Muslims, of no, the countries, no. of the lands, and then you have rulers from amongst the ulama. No. All right, you have ulama scholars, and then under that, those scholars they can be advised, and then under that, you can have what? No. Students. The students. No. So it's upon us to advise the students. No. It's upon us to advise those who are entrusted with our communities. Those who are above us, we have to advise them. How do advice has been done? Yes, there is a manner and a way that advice is to be given. The Salaf have explained that, yes. Especially with the ruler. No. You take your time no. you, in secret. You get to someone who's closer. They can no. touch their heart. We know that all of this has been legislated. However, we're just trying to establish the fact here. You must, three things Allah is pleased with for you. And that is, you advise, give advice to those who have been placed above you. Give advice to them. Our brother is going to explain the benefit to this hadith, inshallah. Nah, um, alhamdulillah, this hadith is a very beneficial hadith. I remember Sheikh Muhammad Luthi Amr, may Allah preserve all of our scholars. I mean, he explained that this hadith is used to establish the three principles of the sunnah. And that everybody that you want to know who's from the, on the sunnah, you, just, you got to judge him by the criterion in this hadith. The first thing is that he worships Allah, that you worship Allah and don't make shirk with him. That's the usul of Islam. That Allah is worship alone without partners. And you can look at the mythology of the Salaf by Sheikh Muh uh, Muhammad Bazmur. In his book, he brought these same three principles and established these as the principles of the Sunnah. He said, And that you hold on to the Sunnah and you do what? And you refute the people of Bid'ah and the innovation that they're doing. That's the thing. First of all, you need to know who the people of innovation are. And you got to know what innovation is. Okay, and you got to be of the people that's qualified to do it. Exactly, that. And you can't break the, the, the people who qualify to do it are the ulama, and we have to return everything back to them, and then they put the hukum on what's innovation and what's an innovator. Not unless for us. you reach the level from amongst the tulab that's exactly. well advanced, that can be able to go into those same proofs and uh, and uh, warn against those people of innovation. I mean, I mean. So then he goes on to enter nasihu men wallahu amurakum, and the third principle is that you advise. Those who are in charge of your, the, the, the Muslim kings that are in charge of the Muslim countries, right? That's the third principle of Sunnah, meaning they're not made rebellion against, they're, they're not Jewish. slandered, they're not slandered, they're not slandered, they're not rebelled against, no matter how evil they are. The principle of Ahlul Sunnah is that we semi wa ta'ali wa lil amr, lo fasik jari, that we hear and obey the Muslim authority in the ma'roof, in the good, even if he's a criminal. Exactly. If he beats your back and take your wealth, this is from the foundations of the Sunnah, not some side issue. It's a foundational principle. And this hadith establishes all three of those principles. And you want to know somebody on the sunnah? You want to know somebody's on the sunnah? Then use this hadith and listen to this person. But if you know him or not, if he's sticking to these criteria and mentioning this hadith, and he's saying, call Allah, call Rasulullah, and he understands these principles according to how the Sahaba and the Salaf understood him, then this man is somebody that you can listen to and benefit from. And he's somebody on the sunnah. So the Shaykh, he said, He said, so the point we want to take from this hadith, to stick to the theme of what we're talking about is the second point, and that is holding firmly to the rope of Allah. He said, Li'annahu yaqiya, now pay attention to this point here, and this is extremely important. He said, Li'annahu yaqi min al iftiraq wal iktilaf 
فلا يحصل اختلاف والافتراء إلا بسبب عدم التمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. He said that because holding on to the rope of Allah, it protects you. It protects the one who adheres to the Quran and the Sunnah Allah Fahma Salaf. It protects you from what? It protects you from differing, mm -hmm. okay, and dividing. Subhanallah. It protects you from differing and dividing. It's not possible. It's not even imaginable or conceivable that anyone who's holding on to the true Salafiyah, because there's only one Salafiyah, anyone who's holding on to the pure Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as he commanded us, that they will be divided and that they will what? They will be diff They will differ. Yes, they would differ in fiqh issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, usul fiqh. They would differ in those issues, but they would never dif differ in the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. And if they differ in the usul fiqh, there is an adab they will have. Is a manner that they will have, and they will understand how to still be brothers and sisters, even when they don't hold the same position in fiqh. Mm -hmm. So here, the shaky said, you would not see differing nor division occurring except for one reason. The person is not holding on to the book in the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Subhanallah. You hear this? You will not see differing. So I ask you, one group is saying the salaf is this, and we bring athars and we bring statement. We got to warn against ahlul bid'ah. We got to do this. We got to do that. One, 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 one. Uh, no, we did. No, uh, we combined the salah. Alhamdulillah. One group brings. You have to, you know, ahlul bid'ah. You have to warn, you have to do this, you can't be mumayyit, you can't ward it down the deen. The Athar say this, the Hadith say this, the ulama that we take from say this. But one group says that, another group comes along and say, yes, you got to do all of that, and you still got to do this. The Quran in the Sunnah is vast. It covers all areas. It deals with economics. Mm -hmm. It deals with social life. It deals with um, not only addressing the people of Bid'ah, not only addressing the people who have went astray, it deals with warning against shirk, but it also calls to what? Preserving those five things of the sharia. Mm -hmm. Preserving life. Mm -hmm. huh? It also calls to what? Preserving wealth. Mm -hmm. It also calls to what? Preserving justice. Mm -hmm. All of these things it calls to. So you cannot negate one side from another side. It don't mean just because you hold it on this side, that now you're neglecting that side. If there's a group of people who want to tackle the problem of warning against al Bidah and the problem is and the problem is we need to be honest again Sheikh Muhammad al-Muhadi al-Makali he have the brothers have signed this agreement he have told them brothers to stay away from the affair of boycotting without referring to the scholars stay away from the affairs of passing fatawas mm -hmm. without returning back to the scholars and the reason why I'm mentioning is not to bash anyone because look what happened look at the chaos we're in right now you got to admit to yourself what chaos are we in because younger students have taken upon themselves to declare other individuals to be off it. Because they might move a certain way that might be a fic issue in the first place. Not even a suit, not even a foundational issue. They, it might be a fic issue. Yeah. Can you give dawah to such and such? Yes, if you don't know, some individuals have excelled. That's just natural. Some people are going to be a lot of gifted people different. No. So some people are going to excel. But we cannot make it blanket to say... We're going to attack people and say these people are that without any evidence, any proof. This is not what he do. And look what he said. He said that the reason for this differing is no doubt not holding on to the book and the sunnah. But guess who he said? And you're resembling Ahlul Kitab. You're resembling. You're resembling the differing that have occurred amongst the people of the book. No. The Jews when you Jews. differ like this, you are differing just like them. Look what Shaykh he said. Ma anna Allah anzal alayhim al-Torah wa injil, walakin lam ya lam ya tasimu bi hamd Allah tafarraku wa qtalifu. He said, even though Allah have revealed to them the Torah mm -hmm. and the injil, what did they do? However, when they did not hold firm to what Allah revealed to them, they differed and divided. So if we truly hold in firm, like we you know we claim to be, we really holding on to what the Prophet said. What Allah said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Azza wa Jal said, what the companions with Allah Ta'ala alayhi were upon, what the A'imma of the Salaf were upon. And we truly was holding on to that. We wouldn't be running around here name calling each other. We wouldn't be running around here on Twitter, you know, saying stay from this, stay from that one, and stay from that. We wouldn't be doing that. We would be men. Men can sit down and talk. Not, I'm going to announce in a class, I've been inviting the brothers to come up or not. I'm going to talk to this person and talk to that person. No, we would be men. 
And we have to come to that person. We come to that person and sit down and talk to that person. We're going to bring our proofs and our evidence. It's okay to differ when you differ in upon Quran and Sunnah, as Sheikh Uthameen mentioned. Because you understand the issue to be this way. And I might understand the issue be to this way. And I might have evidence to support my issue. And you might have evidence to support your issue. But guess what? In reality, we are... Yeah, we're not there. We're we saying, agree. We're agreeing. Because we use the same source. We, we use agree. the same source. Sheikh al when nah. he came and prayed behind Sheikh bin Baz, he folded his arms just like this. No. Nah. Sheikh al was staunch. We all know that he was staunch against what? After coming up at the Rukur, placing the right hand on the left, and one statement is attributed to him, he said to have the bid'ah. This is an innovation. But when he prayed behind Sheikh bin Baz, what did he do? He come across his arms. He crossed his arms. Had the hikmah. Had the hikmah. This is wisdom. This is wisdom. Not causing division. Not causing division. Not separating from people. Not calling people watering down the religion. Because your understanding is not, you cannot comprehend certain things. Acknowledge the fact that your brothers have more knowledge than you in certain issues. Not exactly. And in the proof in this is, there's no such thing of you contradicting yourself so blatantly, saying I'm not going to charge the scholars with that same thing I'm going to charge the students with. I see Sheikh so-and-so in, in, uh, interacting with the Ikhwanis. I'm not going to call him Ikhwani. I see student so-and-so doing it, but I'm going to call him Ikhwani. I see Sheikh so-and-so giving dawah this way, I'm not going to attack the Sheikh. But I'm going to see student so-and-so do it, but I'm going to attack him. What's your agenda? Yeah. You have to be honest. What's the, your agenda? Because the Sharia actually doesn't do that. The Sharia doesn't take one thing, two things that's the same, and make a difference between them. The Sharia doesn't do that. The Sharia doesn't take something that's harmful and something else that's harmful and then make a difference between them. It no. doesn't take something that's good, something else that's good, and then say they're different. And look as a result what happened because of this. The Sharia doesn't do that. Not only did we differ, now we got fanatics. Fanatics where as though they are talking about the scholars and the students without any prejudice whatsoever. Mm -hmm. You have created a group of people who can say it's okay out their mouth that Sheikh so-and-so is a fool. He's an Ahmed. He's stupid. He's an imbecile. This Sheikh, you know, he watered down the religion. This Sheikh, he's, a he's such and such. He's a donkey. He's a true statement. He has tongue cut out. You can have individuals saying that's student. He didn't study. He this, he this and that. You're going to be charged because you created that atmosphere now. They only looking up to you. So when we say advice to Somali and the fanatics of SWABs, we're saying Somali, you're at their head. So now you're going to be asked because if we have ruler so and so, he's going to be what? He's going to be subjected and asked about his those are under his care. He's going to be asked about that. What did the what, what did the what did the um the, the scholar Rotan, what did he say? After every dollar he would make a dua. And they asked him what dua he would make. He would make dua that oh, Allah rectify the affairs of our leaders. Yep. Because if our leaders' affairs is rectified, then everyone else's affairs is rectified. Huh? This is this is the truth. We have to be, we have wallahi, we have to be honest with ourselves. If this is true, Salafia, there's no room for division. There's no room for division. There's nothing for you to come along and say, we are right and those brothers are wrong. Everybody must make their allegiance on that. No one have to make their allegiance on your statement and your statement alone. The allegiance of Kitab was Sunnah. Kitab That's the allegiance. was Sunnah. Abu Hanifa said, it's not permissible for someone to follow me in a position that I take unless you know my evidence. Exactly. But people take positions right now against everybody without even knowing the proof. You ask them for their proof, they don't know. No. Nah. <clears throat> so the brother going to finish the, uh, I, I finished the verse, no. and then the brother finished that part. He said the verse for this, the proof of this that they resemble the people of the book, that after Allah sent to them the, uh, the, the Torah and the Injil, the Jews and the Christians, and they didn't hold firm to the to the root of Allah, and they divided and different is the saying of Allah, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ تَفَرَّقُوا وَاقْتَلَفُوا مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَهُمُ الْبَيِّنَةِ وَأُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَلِيمٌ This is in Surah Ali Imran. Allah was speaking to the Muslims. He said, do not be, told the Muslims, do not be like those who differed, those who have divided and differed after the clear evidence came to them. Yeah. Mm. After the clear evidence came to them Okay, after Salafia came to you Don't divide We have a flyer that we post up on our um, page I want y'all to look at it And I want you to look at the names real closely And I put that flyer up As a way of getting the people to think Not to bash nobody But think how all of these scholars at one point in time Sheikh Rabia Halabi Halim Hal Salim Hailali Ma'rabi Ma'rabi uh, uh, um, Sheikh Obaid 
I put it up there so that all of y'all can see those names lined up together. And we're not saying nobody didn't fall into any innovation or anything like that. We're just saying, look how all of them was one at, at one time. And look how now it is we are all basing our allegiance on whatever scholar view we're going to take. One, we are, one, the laymen don't even know the whole issue. Two, is it really unanimously agreement amongst all of the scholars? That this person is a string? That this person is off it? Is that that person is off it? What made us choose that we take this position against that person? All of this stuff have reasons and rules and regulations that to be followed. And if you want to make tech lead of a certain group of people in terms of that, then it's permissible you can make tech lead in regards to you don't know how to come up with the issues and so forth, which is blind following. But still, all of them was at one point together. Look at the flyer. Now, look at all of the students. Remember when Sheikh Tar here was teaching in Germantown? Because I remember. When he would come down, Dawadib, they all be teaching in there. You remember when Muhammad Manir would actually be teaching? Who remember when uh, Shadid Muhammad came? Where was he first debuted at? He was debuted in Germantown. Yeah. That's when he had the series of you asked for the Elam. That's where I first met him. Yeah. You asked for the Elam, and now here it is. When he was doing the telelinks and establishing. All right? So when we had all of this here, all of the people were together at one time. We have to ask ourselves, what caused the split? Something to think about. What caused the split? And truly is the split, was the split based off Quran and Sunnah? Was the split honestly based off Quran and Sunnah? Who made those calls? Wallahi, this is something that we have to think about. Who made those calls? Now, Somali came a part of an atmosphere, if y'all don't, don't, don't know. The brother came in, alhamdulillah. And may Allah reward him for his efforts of khayr. But then may Allah Jalla wa Ala help us to rectify the situation of addressing the issues you can't overlook the issues and that mean we cannot go around keep making everybody pinpoint at each other you have to now try to solve the situation it's upon you brothers to contact the other brothers not come up and let's talk and, and show the people one one face yeah we, we're inviting the brothers but no one coming up no that's not going to cut it get you publicly defame certain students you publicly defame one another you had made the relationship somewhat can't even be prepared. Yeah. It can't even it's be prepared. too much bad blood now. It's too much bad blood. You got to come out publicly now and say, listen, we owe the community, we owe a community an apology. No. And we owe those brothers an apology. And the way that Ahl Sunnah with Jamar handle things, they refer back to the Kitab was Sunnah. No. As Allah said, what? That's it. In, in what? For in, what the Allah said, for in Kuntum, mm. If you Allah said, if you differ amongst anything, do you refer back to Allah in this message? Point no. blank, period. No. Not you refer to so and so, or Sheikh so and so said this about him, and we riding with that. Oh, you disrespecting the Sheikh. Don't make us make no blind allegiance over no scholar. Some many of us don't even know Sheikh Rabia. We never met him. No, we don't. Don't make us make a legion over what Sheikh Rabia said. Don't make us say we disrespect the Sheikh Rabia because we're not taking this position. No. And don't make it seem like every scholar over there is taking the position of Sheikh Rabia. And they're not. And, let's and be, they're not. Let's be just here. Um, every side is not defaming every side. Um, it's really only the defaming in the back, the, the name calling, the slander, and the attacks are only coming really from one side. And we advise our brothers, Has Somali. We advise our brothers, Abu Khadija, Abu Hasimak, and all the rest of them. We advise them, may Allah preserve all of them and give them a reward for the good they've done. But they got to stop allowing the defaming and the destruction and the backbiting and the slander of their brothers from happening from them and from the, the, the common people. It has to stop. Because you know what happened now? now it has Allah, to stop. Now Allah, what he does is he removed the protection that he had over you. Now certain things start to become exposed. Individuals that you're running with become exposed. You become exposed. Why? Because now you can't get nowhere like that. Talking about people, oppressing people, coming in people's communities, causing people hearts to be divided, making people all of that stuff is Families not Families getting divorced and people fighting physically and amassed it over this stuff. And no one care, and you not care to sit down and say, you know what, let's address these issues. Oh, the brothers, the brothers are staring up. Everyone's saying the brothers are staring up with the videos. They're acting like women. They're going back and forth. The brothers say, we didn't create this problem. The scholars didn't create this problem. We are a reaction to the problem that already created, and we're trying to clean up this mess. And we're asking the students of knowledge who know the detailed information, won't y'all sit down 
and apply the, the Quran and the Sunnah like y'all was taught to apply the Quran mm -hmm. and the Sunnah and actually hash it out. But the fact that y'all won't do it and the fact that our children got to live here, we got to live here, and we are casualty of the jealousy of the petty disputes and squabbles of you particular brothers, then in the reality, we're going to have to clean it up. We're trying to wake our people up. Demand more, ask more questions. No. Shake so-and-so said such and such. It's not obligatory that I have to take Shake so-and-so saying. He's not the prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I don't have to take any scholar's position. I don't have position. to take his agree. position. But if he brings proofs and evidence, mm -hmm. alhamdulillah. Exactly. Okay? But that don't mean I have to stop messing with my, 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 my brother or my sister based on, based, based on you saying that. And you shouldn't make me feel some type of way. Mm -hmm. How many brothers and sisters really feel some type of way that they can't benefit from somebody because Somali and, 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 and the fanatics of S-Pubs or the fanatics going to get on you and troll you on the internet? They're going to get on you and be in your inboxes. They're going to look at you funny. Oh, I can't even go to that masjid. I can't even benefit from that class. I can't even listen to that da'i. I can't even take from that student. I can't even do this. How many of that's going to... That's happening. They got these guys calling brothers working on the stand deviants. Well, the y'all's been... His brothers working... So, then he's the sheikh, he says, وَهَذِهِ نَتِيجَةٌ حَتْمِيَةٌ لِكُلِّ مَنْ لَا يَأْخُذَ دِينَهُ وَعَقِيرَتُهُ مِنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ وَسُنَّةِ رَسُولِهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. فإن النتيجة الاختلاف وتفرق قال الله تعالى إن هذه أمتكم أمة واحدة وأنا ربكم فاتقون and he says قطع أمرهم بينهم زبرا كل حزب بما لديهم فارحون and he says this splitting and differing is the end result of everyone who does not take his religion and his aqidah from the book of Allah and the sunnah of his messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم because verily the the end result of differing and separating is what Allah has said in the Quran. He said, Verily, this Ummah is one Ummah, and I am, I am your Lord, so fear me, worship me alone. He said, But they divided, Bainahum in sects, and every sect, every sect screams about what they please with. What we have, we please what we have. We got the truth. Only us. Come to us. Come to our classes. That's not what they're saying. He says, Kulu him Ferihun. Come to us. We got this. We got the truth. Nobody else doesn't have it. That's not permissible. So to Mukminun, verse 53 and 52. What is the thing that Allah Jalla wa said that we're one Umar? What do you think he mean by one here? We're one in Aqidah. No. We're one in our belief. We're one, we're one in our minhaj. Right? But who legislated that minhaj for us? Who legislated that Aqidah for us? Huh? The Prophet The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes. Right? And his companions with one Allah Ta'ala alayhim. They're the ones who have legislated that stuff for us. They're the ones who legislated what? The minhaj no. and the aqidah. With the Sheikh bin Baz, who became Sheikh of Islam, without a certificate, without a degree. And Allah raised him to that level. What did he say that minhaj consists of? Many people forget this, huh? Mm -hmm. Minhaj is not who's on and who's off it. Nope. Minhaj is not having a bunch of books from Sheikh Rabia. Minaj is not having you not sitting in this class with this person. Minaj is not running around not calling people Ahmed. Minaj is not what s pubs considered to be. Minaj is not this, being watered down the dollar. That's not Minaj. Minaj consists of the following. Akhlaq. Mm -hmm. Morals. Good at dad. Aqidah. Aqidah. How we apply and understand it. It's not my statement. This is Sheikh bin Bats. Mu'amalat. How do we interact with one another? Other human beings. Transactions. Huh? The character that the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned. We have to interact with Allah. It's add that with Allah. It's add that with ourselves. And it's add that with the people. This is what minhaj consists of. So if someone give us one side of minhaj and not give us the whole entire point of minhaj, it's a problem. It's a problem. No, minhaj is not just saying we don't sit and lecture with the people of bidah. Mm -hmm. Let me give you something that Sheikh Tahir said the other day, and I'm going to be honest with you. I want you to listen, regardless where it came from, who said it. The Muslims here in America, they do not reach 3%, and that's all Muslims. Mm -hmm. Every state. Even if you want to say 10 million Muslims, mm -hmm. in every state, they don't reach up to 3%. There is about, what do you say, 340 mil 40 million. Yeah, and some say more, it's about 400 million. Some say 400, 400 million. Allah of Kufar, non-believers, mm -hmm. outside of Muslims. So that makes us what? A minority. Now how much do you think out of the minority of the 2% of Muslims, there are those who practice Salafiyah? Probably not even a percent. 
So in reality, what makes you think if we live amongst these people, we're going to have to interact with these people, we're going to have to engage with these people, they are the majority. So why wouldn't we have a dialogue where we can interact with them? No. Why wouldn't we have something where we, we can't just do what we want to do here? Yeah, so why would we create a bubble around ourselves to say we can't deal with so-and-so because his bid is somehow going to jump on us? One, his bid is he's not even calling to the bid eye. Two, he's, you're not even focused on the people with real bid eye. You know, where people who really have this bid eye. You're focused on brothers who may or may not study with you and who may or may not ride with your decisions. Let's call a spade a spade. That's what it is. You are refuting brothers because they don't agree with your position against so and so. That's all it is. And it's permissible to work with non-Muslims. The law said Ta'awun al abiri wa taqwa. No, the Prophet was selling worked with a non-Muslim. Yeah, Ta'awun al abiri wa Let's go back to the Prophet Sirah. Sheikh Waslam said, if you want to study Minhaj, then you read the biography of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Nah. That's what Minhaj had. Allah SWT. He hired a what? Nah. He hired a mushrik to help him get to Medina when he was migrating. Nah. Who did he hire? To, who he hired a mushrik? Who did he take a debt from? Read Bukhari. Who did he take a debt from? He took a debt from a Jew. He had debt from a Jew because he borrowed from him. No. Nah. He borrowed from a Jew. The Prophet Sallallahu dealt with the non-believers. He Bakr. dealt with the different individuals. He dealt with them. The Abu Bakr and Siddiq. He fed them. He did kind to the poor. They all wasn't Muslims at that time. What do you think hmm. um, Khadija was talking about? He said, no, the law will never disgrace you. Because you keep ties you keep, with kinship. Keep ties with the you kinship. feed the poor. You keep ties with the poor. He wasn't what? Muslims? They, they wasn't, wasn't Muslims. Muslims. Who was he keeping his tie with? Who was he feeding? This is something that we have to think of. The brothers will like us to think that the Muslims are only stuck in this one bubble and we can't get nowhere. So now you look at us and why we have not progressed. Now you look at our, our economic scene. You look at our social state. You look at everything. Cyber school is not... If anyone knows Germantown, Germantown had a real school before. That before, before this. We had a real school. Yeah, we had a school bus. We had different that. people. We had a real school and we had some professionals yeah. came in there. Germantown went from that real school to a cyber school. We're not pitting down nobody. We're not saying that the cyber school doesn't, you know, have no benefit. It does have benefit. But it's not, we're not really getting nowhere. Abu Muhammad Maghrib said the same thing. Dawah Deed said the same thing. Yeah. All of the Dais, you know, Talib Abdullah said the same thing. Why do you think we can't build nothing? We've been donating a whole mass shit up there. And I'm just talking about Germantown. I'm just saying everywhere. Why do you think we can't build nothing? None of the masses are basically finished. Where do you think the problem comes from? You think it comes from the resources? No, we got the resources. We got the resources. We got people who got jobs, who got money, who got dedication, who got expertise. Who got the, we got the resources. So if the resource is not the issue, what is the issue? I tell you this. What's busy in us, what we should be ashamed of, is that these people who are in power in our community has busied us so much with hating one another. Exactly. We haven't established economics. We haven't exactly. established academics. Exactly. We haven't established social programs, exactly. social reform, no wealth building. There has nothing happened because they have made us hate each other so much and we're busy with killing and fighting one another. We have established nothing for ourselves or for the future of our children. And so when they tell you, nothing. and they brain, they brain, they brainwash you, oh, the brothers are holding up the, the, the Hizbis. They are making these videos to do attack us. They, they're criticizing us. They don't care. No, we actually care for our people. And we're tired and we're fed up. And we want you brothers to stop. And if you don't stop, our videos don't stop. If you don't stop, our call don't stop. We want you to stop with the Twitters and the tweets. We want you to stop with your uh, elite group. Only us, we watch out and we cover each other's faults. And we throw everything else under the rug. But we assault everyone that we have academically advanced. We want you to stop that. Because no one, no one told you to do that. Sheikh Muhammad Hadi, especially, when he laid it out, with that agreement you signed, no one told you brothers to do that. And we're going to finish just a little bit because we can't go too long. He says, and the Sheikh, he says that um, every newly invented issue or newly invented methad or menhaj that differs with the other one, right? Because the, the issue is, is that everybody's on some different thing, right? And they're arguing back and forth with one another, right? What happens is what? What happens is many great tribulations happen. It hasn't happened. But people don't talk to each other no more. People get divorces. We have no money. We have no schools. We have no clinics. We have no money. We have nothing. We don't talk to one another. We got people right now won't pray in this masjid. They're right next door to us. 
The Avon get called for fudger. They'll come in and say they won't pray behind us. You got brothers who come by, they won't speak to us. I stood next to a brother who I knew for almost 15 years. Stood right next to the brother. He got up and walked away from me. He wouldn't pray next to me. And this is the situation we're in. But you can't establish anything for your family. You hate me that much that you won't get the 27 times reward in the masjid. You won't, you won't get that. You don't, even, you don't even know why you hate him. Yeah. It's not bitter why you hate him. Yeah. So he said, and shortly he said, much great evil will come from it. And not, no one is safe from this except the one who holds on to the kitab of Allah, the book of Allah, the Quran, and the sunnah of his messenger. He said, uh, he said it could be in the foundational issues. Uh, or, you know what I mean, or, 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 or uh, Asla wa Asas wa Akira, he says, if it's in the, the foundational issues like Akira, and he says um, that it has to be inside the Akira issues, and then the ayat he brings, in yuridu an yakhdu'uka fa inna hasbaka Allah. He said, they intend to what? To, 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 deceive to deceive you, but Allah is the one that what? It's sufficient, it's sufficient for you. For you. Well, who are and Allah is the one who aids you with his, with his victory and his aid and the believers. And Allah is what brings, uh, brings their hearts together. If you were to use everything or pay everything in earth, they add all the gold, all the diamonds, all the wealth, anything of value on the earth. Uh, uh, you still will not be able to bring people's hearts together. You wouldn't be able to bring the, heart, the people's hearts together. No matter what you try. So the fact that our hearts are not together shows you that what's being implemented in our community for the last 20 or so years cannot be the truth. It's impossible. The fact that our heart, we have that much hatred, the truth doesn't uh, produce hatred. Falsehood does. No, the, the, the thing is, the Akita is the truth. Yep. The kitab is the truth. The minhaj is the truth. We have that understanding, mm -hmm. alhamdulillah, meaning we have the direction to go. We do have that. And we're not going to say that, that our brothers are not, they, they, are, they are pumping that as far as creed. Somali and them are pumping the correct creed in terms of that. It's the understanding and the application of that particular un, of a creed and minhaj. Mm -hmm. That's where the, the problem lies at. It's the application of it. And the, and, and the reason why this happened is because we're not being honest with ourselves, even myself and anyone in the arena right. of Dawah. We have to know our own limitations. We have to know our own limitations. Our own limitation is that we got to realize when we're not scholars, when we're not advanced enough mm -hmm. to really progress, we only can give you what we have. The scholars have a saying, the person can't give you what they don't possess. No, they can, no one can give you something that they don't possess. We have to understand if we don't understand these issues, when we are not equipped to deal with these issues, and that's why we see a lot of our brothers don't focus on social ills, because we're not equipped to deal with social ills. We don't have a lot of expertise in that field, and people dealing with social ills, but we have Quran and Sunnah. So we need to go back now, and go back to the ulama, the expertise, and we need to go back to the ulama of secular. No one say you can't deal secretly. I don't know where y'all get this concept from. You can't deal in economic. Go to a college and ask somebody. You, I, I don't know there, where you get that from. How do you, how do you make a social program? It's okay to ask them. Yeah, it's nothing wrong with that. This don't mean you ikhwani. Man, you don't even know what you're talking about, ikhwani. This has got nothing to do with it. Ikhwani use that as a front. If you really know about them, they use that as a front. Read the article that we put out. This got nothing to do with ikhwani social reforms. I'm going to tell you right now. The kufar, they know that all it takes is the Muslims really, really, really unite and go back to the Quran and Sunnah traditionally. A way to Fahma Salaf, they can't stop them. So they do everything they can. Mostly all of the deviant groups you see, especially nowadays, the different Jama'at, mm -hmm. they got a British agent behind them. Yeah. This is no lie. Just do the history. The Aquani Muslimin movement. Ahmadiyya. Was, uh, the Aquani Muslimin, uh, Ahmadiyya, all from the British Secret Service. The Al Qaeda, ISIS, the American Secret Service. I mean, American CIA. We can, the list goes on. Even if you go back to the old sects of the past, the Qadiriyya, it was an Iraqi Christian. Right? There was a Jew that started the, you the, know, Shia. the... Shia. The Shia. So if you look at it as, you know, it's always someone outside causing that division. Causing that division to the Muslims. And the Muslims, they leave off the Quran and Sunnah. And the Sheikh, he said here, and he said, Especially, mm -hmm. there's no room for error in mm -hmm. Aqidah. There's no room for error in Aqidah. None. But I wanted to mention one thing here to bring it home. When he said, He said that each one of them, they introduce a different way mm -hmm. and that oppose the other. I'm going to tell you 
something that we can make at home. Building our allegiance around personalities. This is what happened. I love this brother, right? This brother teach. I naturally have love for this particular brother, right? So when I have love for this brother and that which he's teaching, I normally, you know, have an affection for him. So what happened is other people start studying with him. They have an affection for him. Since someone new come along, even though he might be on the same thing that we are, he might have a bigger crowd that comes to him. Mm -hmm. And they love him. And what happened is his students, and this happened, this happened centuries, and we showed that with Ibn, uh, 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 Ibn, Ibn Jariah, Jariah. Right? It happened with Ibn Bukhari. It happens with many students. His students come along, right, over there, and he starts saying statements like, well, you know your sheikh or your teacher, he was wrong in this issue. And then this student, because of their gira, their, 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 their blonde, their, mm -hmm. not their blonde, but their love and their affection for their teacher, they come back and say, no, our teacher didn't make no mistake, your teacher did. And then the refutations start coming. Just look and ask what happened with the match and what happened over there in, uh, um, in Medina. Let's look what happened back and forth when the students caused that problem. I don't blame the shiuk. It was the students that kept going back and forth. The, 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 the students of the Maj, mm -hmm. they're more better than the students of Medina. The students of Medina are more better than... The, leave all that stuff. The Dawah was being spread. The, 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 the students of Muk, Sheikh Mukbil, uh, Rabbit Allah Ta'ala, was meeting every year. Well, Allah said, Kula, it was meeting every day year. In but this is how it happens. Yeah. It happens that each group now become rejoiced because yeah. what they did, they left off. He tapped with Sunnah. And I'm not yeah. saying that about the Maj or about the scholars. I'm just saying, look how different come. Different come in so many ways. Because you don't stick to kitab with sunnah. The Prophet وسلم, he saw the man abusing and assaulting Abu Bakr as Siddiq. And Abu, Abu Bakr was quiet. He didn't say nothing. So the Prophet remained there. وسلم. So when Abu Bakr got up and defended himself and said something back to the man, the Prophet وسلم, got up. Right? First he frowned. He got up and he left. And when Abu Bakr asked the Prophet وسلم, why did he leave? He said, rally the angels was there defending you. The angels was there defending you. So... What I'm trying to say is that sometimes, brothers and sisters, we base, base our allegiance off the personalities that we have grown to love. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it's, not, it's not fair because it's not right. I'm not saying for those who benefit from Somali, those who learn from his classes, to leave Somali alone. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is this. If they're not bringing no evidence against these brothers, they're not bringing no evidence against this person, then take it for what it is. It's just personal squabble. And throw it to the side. And don't let no one make you feel some type of way because you're not riding off someone's personal squabble. You're not disrespecting Sheikh Rabia. You're not disrespecting Sheikh Obeid. You're not disrespecting Sheikh Muhammad Mahadi. You're not disrespecting any of the scholars. And do not be naive. Some of our brothers use the names of the scholars to hoodwink us because some of the scholars don't know that they're doing that. And that's just the truth. And you can't think no one do that because our hearts, like Sheikh Shabbat, you know, our hearts can be, uh, you know, can, can be corroded. Yeah. Right? So they, 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 any, any of that can happen. We can mm -hmm. act like that don't happen. That does happen. But what we have to do is, brother, just teach the lesson. That's the benefit. Alhamdulillah. But not when the brother want to sit there and open it up and start saying, well, see this principle here? Shadi Muhammad is, you know, he's the worst individual. Come on, Aki. And the thing about it is, is that if they're wrong, it goes up and it comes back down to somebody. And if you're listening to somebody being backbit and slandered, you take the sin too. Come on, Aki. Seriously? The Christians is one of the biggest organizations here. The Ahmadiyya is one of the biggest organizations here in Philadelphia. They're one of the biggest organizations yeah, here. Yeah, right there on Broad and Glimmer. We need a, a, a concentrated effort against that kufr. We need a concentrated effort against the Christians up and down the block saying Allah has a son. Is that not the... Is, is that, Something is, that Allah said that the earth, the earth and the heavens is getting ready to split asunder because of it. And you want to tell me the fitting of Shadid Muhammad and Tariq Wyatt is the greatest right now? Yeah. Seriously? Because the and idda. Ready to come with something hideous, Allah said in the Quran, by people say Allah got a book. I'm, I mean, Allah got a, a, a son. Seriously, honestly, the scholars are not in their lectures talking about Shadid Muhammad or Tahir Wyatt overseas. I challenge you, go listen to Sheikh Obey talks. I want to, I want, I want to hear uh, Shadid come out of his mouth. I guarantee you won't come out. Listen to his talks. I want you to listen to any Sheikh Muhammad had these talks. I can play him. I just got one lesson. I just got finished listening to him. You don't hear those names. So why are you brothers on the member? Why are you brothers in your classes? Why are you brothers going to different communities? Why are you brothers are doing this? Nobody is doing this but you guys. And when we call you up on it, you want to say we're criticizing and attacking the brothers. We're attacking the true Salafia. We're not worrying about the people who distorting and watering down. No, you're lying to the people. We're not the truth. 
we're trying to do a collective effort against the people that are distorting the deen. But every time we try to turn our attentions to them, you come and busy us with this. So we got to hmm. come back and wake the people up and get you out of the way so that we can get things go going again. Get the ball rolling. The elders, when they had the affair, they was doing things. They was moving. Yes, they didn't have all the necessary knowledge. But when the youth took over things, what happened? SubhanAllah al Last but not least, because we got to stop. We don't make our videos too long. The Sheikh, he mentioned something very, very important about this verse. And we're going to end it with that. He said that the Prophet Wasallam, Allah told him that he was not able to unite the hearts of the people by giving them a bunch of abundance of gifts or money. It wasn't money that bind them. No. It wasn't um, gifts that bind them. It wasn't, you marriage. know, a different thing. Marriage. It wasn't these things, wasn't these worldly aspirations. They wasn't a thing that bind them. Praise. Okay. This is why they didn't differ with each other. As Sheikh, that Sheikh, Sheikh Islam to me, he made a beautiful point in Tafsir. He said, you will find that the differing amongst the Sahabas in Tafsir was little. Why? Because this here, their hearts was truly connected. Their hearts was truly connected. They wasn't associated with each other because he's so-and-so and he take from so-and-so. And, and well, so he slid me a few dollars. That wasn't the case. Their hearts were really connected. So this is what Allah is saying. The Sheikh said, rather, if it was the case that they was connected through anything other than what Allah connected them with wealth, provision, money and status and gifts and they really was connected what's going to happen it's going to increase them in flight and hatred to one another why because each one is going to be counting the, each other uh, pockets and each the, one is going to yeah. be looking at you know no, no. each one is going to be holding stuff over don't the feds i think the feds do that too and i think other different criminal organizations does that to political figures right yeah, we got do. this over you we got this over you ever you. get out of pocket we're going to pull this out Got the sins of other imams in the city over their head. I mean, you, you can see where the, the, the old administration was overthrown. The new one came in. All the different that ever happened in, our, in that masjid up there in so Germantown, may Allah preserve our brothers, was always over some dunya issue. All the different. Administration, who's the administration, who's not and the nobody, administration. And, the, and then the people, the elders, who's supposed to be saying something right now, is not standing up saying nothing. They got to say something. You got to say something. You have to say something. No innuendos. You got to come out. If you're not going to say nothing publicly, then you got to go up there and take them young bucks just as Abu Awais did. Because when Abu Awais was alive, he didn't play with them. He called them and he pulled them in his office. He talked to them and he spoke to them. You got to do the same thing. Grab them guys by their hands and calm them down. That's There's it. no way in the world they should be taking the lead. Our, our older, our elder, no way in the our, world. Our elder, uh, uh, Dawood Adi, our elder, Taufiq Abu Zainan, our elder, uh, uh, um, Abdul Abdullah. To, I told Abdullah, we need you to step up and come up here. Sit up, sit these young guys down and say enough is enough. And call them out. If they're doing something that's incorrect, call them out. Call them out on it. Don't have them sitting there saying what they're doing is correct. No, they don't got scholars in their pockets. And I don't care what thoughts they get. Call them out. If it's not Kitab with Sunnah, we're not taking the statement of a scholar over Kitab with Sunnah. We're not taking the statement of anyone over Kitab with Sunnah. Call them out. We want to purify the ranks. These individuals need to stop what they're doing because we can't learn. None of us can't learn. The Sheikh mm -hmm. brought a beautiful point here. He said, look, all of that stuff couldn't unite them. But look what Allah Jalla Wala said did unite them. Unite them. It was kitab was sunnah. No. That's what united them. وَقَدْ هَدَّرُ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى مِمَا وَقَعَ فِيهِ أُمَا سَابِقَ مِنْ تَفَرُقَهَا وَبَعْدَهَا جَاءَتْهَا الْبَيِّنَاتِ Allah Jalla Wala, he said, the Sheikh said, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala have warned us what have occurred with the previous generations or previous nations from the differing that happened at the clear evidence came to them. Allah no. said, mm. That what? That they did not differ. The people of the book did not differ. Except that at the clear evidence came to them. They don't have no excuse. Why they don't have no excuse? Because Allah already they clarified, clarified the matter to them. When the evidence came, he clarified it. They had no excuse. At the end, he said what? Oh, brothers... This is what he's saying. The Sheikh is saying, we're not getting it wrong here. Sheikh Fuzan is saying, they have abandoned. They abandoned the book. Brothers, did you abandon the advice of Sheikh Muhammad, Sheikh Muhammad al Mahadi? What happened to the agreement? Did you abandon that agreement that you signed your hand, John Hancock on it? That you wasn't going to pass part to us? That you wasn't going to boycott? That you're just going to translate the works of the early man? That you wasn't going to put yourself in dealing with Jahwat Adil? This is what he asked you brothers to do. Did you abandon that? Because Bilal Davis, on, in, in the year 2005, he signed this, this agreement. 
And then in the year 2015, he came back and he got a, a clip or an audio saying that we're never going to leave alone Josh Bataille deal. So you abandoned the agreement. So you abandoned the agreement. How you do that? You don't supposed to be dealing with this. You don't supposed to be dealing in those affairs. Leave it to the ulama. You only supposed to refute, refute organizations that's already been refuted already. They already been not making up groups to refute people to refute or using your brothers as a scapegoat. No. Stay away from them. They have ikhwani tendencies. These individuals can, come on, Aki. They have ikhwani tendencies. Fair Allah. Yeah, ikhwan. They owe my brothers. So hold we on, hold on. They became, Allah, please. They became. Uh, they know better than the major scholars now. Encyclopedia in their knowledge. So I guess Sheikh Suhaimi got it wrong. Well, he don't know Tari like we do. Uh, Sheikh Wasil Allah's got it wrong. Sheikh he don't, he don't know like got this. it they wrong. They don't know it. So your knowledge superseded theirs. <laughs> this is it's a gene. No. May Allah have mercy. May Allah have mercy. And at the end of this, the Sheikh he mentioned all at the end. Alhamdulillah, he mentioned a beautiful uh, hadith where he said that uh, the Prophet used to stay in the middle of the night and we asked Allah to make us this, this dua on our tongue and we ended with this. The Prophet used to stand up in the middle of the night and he said, Oh Allah, the Lord of Jibril and Mikael and Israfil, the originators of the heavens and the earth, the knower of the unseen and the seen, uh, you are the one that's going to judge between your servants concerning those issues that they differ on. And then, then the Prophet said, So guide me to the correct decision from that, those things that they differ. Mm -hmm. Guide me to the correct, to the truth by your permission of that which they differ therein. Because in rally, indeed, you are Allah, you're the one who guides uh, uh, whoever you will, you guide to the straight path. He said, This is a tremendous dua, and with it, the Muslim is protected, and he is holding, Allah protects the Muslim from desires, fitting, and shalom no, evil no. and that's the end of that uh we ask allah jalla wa ala to make our advice sincere no, and to make our intentions no, no, sincere no, no, no. the videos brothers and sisters will not stop and to the brothers inshallah ta'ala they make a public retraction and they sit down with their brothers whether it's behind closed doors or not they sit down and they really squabble and put the squabbles to this this is what we asking the brothers to do somali we asking you to stop the fanatics stop the laymans going around calling people ahlu bidah that's going to be on your hands and also, Abu Khadija is going to be in your hands. Also, Abu Hassan Mala is going to be in your hands. You got these individuals running around here who don't know Aleph Bata. They don't even know how to read Arabic. They don't even know the uh, six obligations of wudu. They don't even know how to make prayer uh, prayer correctly. No, they don't. And they run around calling people Ahlul Bidah. They, they got hatred for Tar here, and they don't even know why they got hatred for Tar. They got hatred for Shadid. They don't even know why they got hatred for Shadid. They got hatred for any. They don't even know why. You ask them, what was their bid They can't tell you. That's just like we used to grow up. We hated South Philly. I was from North Philly. We hated South Philly. Didn't know why. We just fought them when we seen them on the train. It's the same concept. It's a gang mentality. We need the fair law and stop this stuff. We need our elders to step up to the plate and come grab their hands and say enough is enough. Yusakallah Khaim. Subhanakallah humi hamdik. Ashhadu Allah ilaha anta staqwa yatubi ilayk.